what is up guys welcome to the dynasty fan podcast i am your host caleb Munoz, and today i'm going to be taking you through the thursday night recap going to be breaking down my top five takeaways for fantasy due to the thursday's game so glad to have some football back it's great to finally be in season now and so for my top five takeaways going to be starting in at number five going to be talking about james cook right so be patient with james cook i know he came out one carry and fumbles the ball probably one of the worst things you can do as a rookie but be patient with him i think the good thing about it also was that zach moss did not look good right a lot of people are happy that really that zach moss was even on the field like that was an accomplishment for him but don't leave Zach Moss on the waiver wire, guys. Let someone else pick him up and waste some fab on him. He is pretty much nothing. He came out. He had six carries, right? Six receptions for six fantasy points. So six, six, six. The devil's number. Stay away from Zach Moss. He is meaningless there. And I think that James Cook is going to gradually get some more opportunity. And with the uh, upside that he has... Right, he's going to outshine Zach Moss sooner rather than later. So be patient with him in Dynasty. Also in redraft, if you have him on stash on your bench, keep him a couple weeks. Once he gets in there, hopefully you can hold on to that football. And I think he'll make some good plays for you guys in your fantasy teams. So there is number five. Going with number four, fantasy takeaway number four is that Cooper Cup is pretty much QB proof. He is that guy, guys. We were Worried about pre uh, preseason with the Stafford and his elbow issues, how it was going to affect Cooper Cup. Some even moved him out of that wide receiver one spot due to this, and I think clearly that was a bad decision. I know Justin Jefferson hasn't played yet, who I still love also for this season, but Cooper Cup back to his rare form that he was in last season, and even with a struggling Matt Stafford, still goes out and just dominates again so cooper cup looking like he's gonna have another top wide receiver season possibly wide receiver one finish back to back so cooper cup Q qb proof and fantasy takeaway number three is going to be that gabe davis he was solid but he may be big play or td dependent so i know this is the jury's still out on this for me, I think I could see it both ways. You could be concerned that he only had five targets, but you could also see the big play upside that he has, that even in those five targets, he was able to turn that into four receptions. I believe it was 88 yards and 18 fantasy points right, with that touchdown that he had. So definitely has the big play ability, but I could see also the concern in this Buffalo offense that if he's going to be getting that low volume, that he could be big play or TD dependent with no touchdown in those four receptions, only 12 points. We might be saying a different story if he's just four for 88 with no touchdown week one. So I could see the concern of him only having five targets in week one, but time will tell. I think also he could be increase his target share as the season goes on. The good thing was that he was pretty much out there uh, with a lot higher snap share this game than he was in past seasons, pretty much about 100% snap share this game. So definitely looking positive for Gabe Davis, but I'm still not weighing in on this yet. I think I still need to see a couple more weeks and see what that reception and that the reception totals and also that volume, what it will be in that Buffalo offense. So fantasy takeaway number two. And also, guys, if you guys are enjoying the show, we thank you for tuning in. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe if you're getting something from this. So going to number two, fantasy takeaway number two. Daryl Henderson is the RB1 in this Rams offense, at least for now, right? We know that he was the first to come back off an injury, off that injury tag in the preseason. So he's had a little bit more run with the ones as well as practice and game time situations. So Cam Akers is going to be brought back slowly. It looks like slower than Daryl Henderson. We know that Cam Akers was rushed back. So I think they're going to take their time on this one. 
And I think that he will get, obviously, more snaps than he did this past game. Daryl Henderson did dominate the snap share, as well as the carries and really all the workload. But I think that they're just easing him back into it as he just got off of that other injury tag that he had in the preseason. So I think we'll soon see Akers back on the field getting uh, some more totals as far as receptions and total carries. And also, I think it'll gradually increase as the season goes on and he gets more comfortable in practice and starts looking more and more like his old self, hopefully. So in the meantime, guys, if you have Daryl Henderson, I think if I have him in Dynasty, I'll be trying to sell him. If you could get – if if people believe that he's an RB1, you know, I, I don't think he will be uh, in the long run. But if somebody believes that and they're willing to give you a first for him, I'd be giving him up for that easily. So number one takeaway from our fantasy uh, week one, right, or game one, is that Allen Robinson, guys, may continue to disappoint. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, hey, it's one game, right? He, but it's just very, very concerning for me seeing that Allen Robinson is out there for a majority of the snaps, right, runs a lot of routes and still – in that only two targets guys the whole game so this is definitely concerning in my opinion that this was even a positive game script as far as a pass friendly game script where they were getting beat pretty much the whole game coming from behind having to throw the rams through 41 pass attempts so 41 times and in that still only two targets for Allen robinson and i saw you know some people saying well, you know, it's Stafford's taking in, uh, he's just locking in on Cup and he's not looking anywhere else. But Skoranek, right, had six targets himself. I believe Higby had 11. So I don't know if we can say that, right? So it's just very concerning. And also, you know, people are saying, hey, it's just one game, but it's not. We have a whole season's worth, right? Last season, Allen Robinson disappointed the whole year. And we can say, Matt Nagy, it was the Bears, it was a system, it was Justin Fields and the rookie QB. But we do know that Mooney was able to do well there. So I just don't see how we could make the argument that he is good. I think that he's still good. In my opinion, guys, I think that he's definitely on the decline. And we saw it last year already, and we just haven't accepted it yet. And for me, in my opinion, for me to change my tune on Allen Robinson, I need to see about five or six games. I need to see about five or six games of him getting good production, getting targets, and even looking like he wants to be out there. Some of the some of the routes he ran, in my opinion, guys, it didn't even look like he was running that hard or even trying to get open. Maybe he thought the ball wasn't going to him. I don't know. But I do know there was some other plays where he was open. The ball didn't come his way. But in my opinion, guys, I need to see him go out there and get about five or six good games in his under his belt before I start saying that he's back or anything like that. In my opinion, he's on the decline, and we're seeing much of the same with this in his first performance, guys. So Alan Robinson, I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments what you think. I know a lot of people are 50-50 kind of on this and still giving him the benefit of the doubt. I know there was a lot of pressure on Stafford, but I just – don't see the argument as to how the how do you explain those other guys getting targets I just I don't know so I'm I'm out on Allen Robinson to be honest guys already I already was uh, feeling like that last year as he was disappointing and he just looked disinterested doesn't even look like he really wants to even play football sometimes out there so let me know guys what you think about Allen Robinson so thank you guys for tuning in that was our show for today Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe for us, and we'll see you guys in the next show.